It's a question that comes up more and more frequently with all of our client calls. Which is better for my business, Facebook ads or Google ads? And in this video, we're breaking it down so you have a better idea on how to grow your business for the remainder of 2022 and into 23. Stay tuned. All right, so let's first break down the two criteria that differentiates Facebook ads from Google ads. First one being that Facebook, we are introducing a product or a service to someone who is most likely never heard of you. Now we can control that with audience exclusion where we're not retargeting people on the top of the funnel. But either way, we're introducing a product or service that they have never seen before. And we're hoping that that product or service is something that that person is interested in. That's Facebook. For Google, we are bidding on keywords that are specific to the user's intent. Meaning, if somebody's searching for cheapest dog toys, we are going to bid on that keyword and show them ads for the cheapest dog toys. Might not be actually an effective search term because cheap generally doesn't result in high revenue ad dollars, but either way you get the picture. So those are the main factors is we're introducing Facebook and products and services to users who may or may not want it. And that's where the audience targeting comes in. For Google, we're doing the keyword research to figure out what are the most valuable keywords that we're gonna bid on to get more conversions. That is the purchase intent bonus of Google Ads. So let's break down Google specifically to start. And before we go into this, I would really appreciate if you hit that thumbs up button. YouTube algorithm likes it, I like it, makes me wanna continue making content for you guys. So hit the thumbs up and let's get into Google Ads. So because Google is becoming this massive company who has a multiple different options for advertising. We have Google search, we have Google shopping, we have Google performance max campaigns, which you can find a video about right here. We also have display networks. We have a multitude of different ways that we can utilize Google to increase our sales or leads for our clients and for your business. So with that, where Google used to just be search, it was kind of limiting in terms of the creative assets that you could use to try to generate those sales. Nowadays, it's completely different. We have automation and AI that is bidding on keywords and audiences that are most likely going to convert. And I have experience with my Shopify store on Google, Google Shopping, Google Smart Shopping, Google Performance Max campaigns, all of these different ones that effectively work really well. So just like Facebook, you can bid on different time frames, different days of the week in order to capture your audience when they're most likely going to be searching. So if you're a B2B business, chances are you wanna be running ads during the day because most likely when someone goes home, they may or may not be searching. If you are an e-commerce store and you are bidding on different household item keywords or couches, furniture, home, aspects you want to be bidding later in the day or in the morning when somebody is home and they're searching for something that they need for their house. So understanding that you have that control. But here's the outlier. The outlier is that with Google's AI and how advanced everything is getting, it's becoming challenging to control the results as much as we used to be able to five, eight, ten years ago. So what I mean by that is this year they actually are removing expanded text ads, which if you're familiar with Google ads, it's basically where you had the control of headlines and descriptions, site link extensions, call out extensions and all of that. Now everything is switching to responsive search ads, which means you basically have 15 headlines and a bunch of different descriptions that are going to automatically show based on which ones are engaging most. For YouTube, you are able to select audiences or channels that you want to bid on, but with the Performance Max campaign, you basically have no control. So as the years have progressed, it's basically been like Google's taking a little bit more control back 
and a little bit more and a little bit more to ensure that they have the control on when they're spending your money, how they're spending your money and where they're spending your money. Now I will, the caveat to that is that Google ads are still super effective. And when I say that, I mean that we just reviewed a Google ads account that had a 17 X ROAS. It was astonishing. Price point of the products were pretty high, but either way, 17X ROAS, which is remarkable. And I've never seen that on Facebook on the consistency in the time frame that I saw on this account. So Google ads continue to be super effective because you are bidding on keywords when people are searching to buy. And that's the most important part about Google ads. So let's shift focus and jump over to Facebook ads. First of all, the news. We all know Facebook has lost half of their market value, maybe even more at this point. We know that the tracking is challenging. We know that the attribution is challenging. And we know that people's ad accounts randomly get banned. Those are the problems with Facebook right now. But that is not to say that it still does not work. So my thing, and when people call our agency, the focus is to establish what is the business and what are your goals? Brand awareness, showing your ad, video views, you're still getting a massive amount of people seeing your ads. Now, how effective is that? We don't know. And that's the problem with the attribution issue in that we're not able to tangibly track every single purchase, which means that ROAS as an identifier of the successful campaign no longer works. We need to determine how else can we justify Facebook ad spend without knowing if purchases have been made. If you guys are finding this video useful, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, get notified anytime I make a video, which should be weekly or a couple times a week moving forward. The other thing to consider is with the amount of stuff or fluff that's on Facebook currently, identifying is that platform most effective for your business? The convenient thing here is that you can use your Facebook business manager to use Instagram ads. And Instagram is still a really popular platform, no disputing that. And with Instagram, you can target people who are ready to purchase, you know? So if you're in the fashion world, displaying your clothing, your hats, your accessories, whatever those are on Instagram will yield you much better results than Facebook. The other thing with everyone wanting to scroll now on Instagram Reels and TikTok is that you can actually use ads on Instagram Reels that are similar in style to capture your audience. So overall, both platforms are gonna work. But my experience with the amount of creative needed, the amount of ad copy testing needed, the amount of retesting different audiences to find people who are gonna purchase, I would start with Google. And I know it's terrible because I'm on social media all the time, but the more likely winner of the two is going to be Google ads, especially with the variance of options that you have for placements. Like I said, display network, YouTube, Google search, Google shopping, partner networks. I mean, the options are endless. And if you're a lead generation business, you can even get leads now on Google. So the battle, who knows? I can't be sure because I don't know your business. But if you want to leave a comment below, I'll look into it and I'll give you my opinion specific to your business. So let me know in the comments. But like I said, my option would be Google ads. Make sure you have some control over your spend, your budget, your placements. Because what will happen is you need to make sure that you have all of your conversion actions set up correctly so that Google can optimize for those. If you're looking for sales or leads, but you don't have that trigger set up in Google Tag Manager to tell Google Ads like, hey, this is the action we want people to take. Well, then you could potentially be wasting a ton of money. If you're interested, you can actually click this video where I get into how to set up conversions using Google Tag Manager to make your life a whole lot easier. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, leave a comment right down here below and ask away because I'm here to help you and I enjoy what I do. 
So let me know, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.